Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of Live from Northwestern. My name is Fritz Berger, and I'm an Assistant Director of Admission I'm here at Northwestern. I'm coming to you today from my humble abode here in the Windy City. Um, and I'm so excited to be talking to you today with two of my colleagues from the university about internships and job preparation um, at the university, a big part of a lot of students' college experience. Um, so before we dive into all that, I want, an want to give my counterparts an opportunity to introduce themselves. Um, so I'm going to let them do that just now. Camila? Thank you, Fritz. Um, my name is Camila Allen, and I'm the Director of Student Career Advising with Northwestern Career Advancement. I have worked at NCA, which is the acronym we use for short, um, for 12 years now. And I'm also a, an alumna of the Master's in Counseling Psych Program. So welcome to Northwestern Future Wildcats. And now we're going to pass it over to Jenny, who's gonna come off and introduce herself right now. Oh, I think we have a little tech issue with the mute button there. Thank you all for bearing with us real quick. And here we go with Jenny. Okay, third time's a charm. Hopefully you can hear me, so sorry about that. <laughs> Hi everybody, um, I'm Jenny Harkle-Road and I am the director of the employer relations team working um, side by side with uh, Camila at Northwestern Career Advancement. I've been at Northwestern um, for four years now um, and really excited to be here. All right, fantastic. Thank you guys um, for joining us today. I know students um, have a lot of questions that they're going to want to ask throughout um, the program. So we're going to try to get to as many of your questions, students, as possible over the next hour. Feel free to use the YouTube chat feature and we'll get to as many of those questions as we can for um, the next 60 minutes. Um, also, since you're tuning in and on the YouTube channel today, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, hit that button below to receive the latest news um, coming out of our office on YouTube and to get Oh, those notifications for our remaining live programming coming up the rest of this week and dipping into next week as well. Um, so as we go back to internships now though, um, I'm going to let um, Camila and Jenny talk a little bit more about the Northwestern Career Advancement Office and how it really serves um, students and the resources it provides to all the Wildcats on campus. Thanks. So Jenny and I thought we'd start off by just giving an overview of how our team works together to serve students at NCA. Um, in my role, I lead our career advising team, which is the team that guides students in the pursuit of um, jobs and internships and applying for those opportunities. Um, at NCA, we have a team of career counselors and career advisors who will guide you through all stages of your career development, whether you're uncertain of your career interests or completely sure of the career path that you want to pursue. Um, exploration is a very important part of your North, Northwestern experience, and our career counselors support students with connecting academic majors to careers and reflecting on how skills, values, and interests influence the career path you may choose. And our career advisors, as I mentioned, guide students in the process of applying to professional opportunities, including internships and even full-time jobs after graduation. Um, that includes writing documents like resumes, cover letters, um, finding internship and job postings, networking with alumni and other professionals, and preparing for interviews. Um, our career advisors are aligned by School of Enrollment and Academic Program at Northwestern, which allows them to have an in-depth understanding of the career opportunities and resources available by each major. So when you start um, at Northwestern, you can work with the same career advisor for your entire four years if you're in the same School of Enrollment, and that, that allows you to have a deeper relationship over time as they support you through internship and eventually job searching. Um, I also want to mention that we work very closely with three other career offices at Northwestern. Um, some of the schools at Northwestern have their own career offices that we partner with very closely, including Medill Career Services, Engineering Career Development in McCormick, and Epics in the School of Communication. And our, we partner very closely to provide comprehensive support for students enrolled in both of those schools um, while, during your time at Northwestern. So that's a little overview of the advising and counseling functions of our office. I'll turn to Jenny to talk more about how we work with employers. Great, thanks Camila. Um, so as Camila mentioned, my team is the employer relations team. So we're the folks that are responsible for building, cultivating, maintaining relationships with organizations who are interested in our wonderful Northwestern talent. 
Um, and we do this through a variety of ways. Our team is actually structured um, using um, an industry model. So every um, person that sits within the team manages a portfolio of different industries. And we do this because we know you're interested in lots of different things. Um, and we know that industries hire at different points and in different ways throughout the year. So we wanna make sure that we're really providing kind of um, up to date and current guidance um, that would speak to the particular industry that you're interested in. Um, we also are the team that is responsible for um, hosting a lot of events on campus that bring employers to us. Um, and this is through things like large scale career fairs that happen um, several times a year. Um, we also host a number of what I would call niche or smaller career fairs that might be focused on a particular industry or subset of industries. Um, we have a interview center that we run um, that um, will see hundreds, if not thousands of interviews taking place um, throughout the academic year with employers interested in um, interviewing folks for internships and full-time jobs. Um, and we also do a lot of events and programs that bring together alums, employers, um, interfacing in, um, through engagement opportunities with students. And that could be everything from just learning about what an industry is and exploring it and education about it, um, all the way to something that might be a more traditional recruiting event. Um, we work really closely with the um, Northwestern Alumni Association through a couple of marquee programs that um, connect um, our wonderful alums and our current students. Um, and our team is also the ones that are responsible for managing a platform that's called Handshake. And Handshake is kind of your comprehensive career portal when you arrive to uh, campus. Um, that is everything from um, jobs and internship postings to learning about upcoming events that might be happening um, to registering for career fairs. A lot of the, all, all the things that I just, I just talked about. Um, I think probably in a given year, we'll approve tens of thousands of jobs and internships on that portal. So um, certainly lots and lots of opportunities out there for Northwestern students. Awesome. Thank you both so much for helping um, our audience get a better understanding of all that uh, Northwestern Career Advancement offers um, undergrads as they go through their four years and um, look beyond their time on campus. Um, we already have questions coming in, so thank you to all of you um, who are submitting questions for us. And we're going to dive into a couple of those um, right off the bat here. So from Elizabeth, thank you for all of your questions thus far. Um, does getting out of school a month later than schools on the semester system affect getting internships because our schedules may not accommodate as well as others? Um, definitely, I know that's always a concern I'm out uh, that I have to answer when I'm out on the road with uh, prospective students because Northwestern being on the quarter system ends up getting out in early to mid June versus early May from a lot of uh, other schools. So I'm going to let the experts kind of tackle that. Um, and which of you would like to answer that question? Jenny will take I, it. Yeah, I'd be happy to take that one just because we work so closely with employers. A very topical question, um, one that we get a lot, um, and I really appreciate the question. Um, I would say the short answer is, is that no, we do not see um, it affecting um, the types of organizations that we work with or those that are interested in hiring Northwestern students. I think the first thing to keep in mind is, is that while we are on the quarter system, so are lots of other really competitive and selective institutions. Um, so um, this, is, this is one of those times where we're, we're in really good company. Um, and as a result of that, sometimes we do see um, employers being a little bit creative in how they think about internship approaches. For example, they might have two start dates for uh, students. One of those would be um, for students that are on the semester cadence and then some that would be on for on the, the quarter cadence. Um, I, I would say another thing is just that we see a lot of um, students who kind of take advantage. Yes, we, we, uh, we end later, but we also start later. So there are a lot of students who also really leverage that extra time um, at the very end of the summer when a lot of other students are leaving. Um, so, you know, for us, um, well, I know it's a valid concern and it's something that I would say we do a lot of education with employers about in terms of the timing and the rhythm of our, of our academic calendar. Um, it is not something that we have yet seen um, be problematic in terms of the overall competitiveness of our students. Awesome. 
Great question. Thank you for that answer, Jenny. Really, really helpful for our students. Um, let's kind of just kind of unpack that a little before then, though, and go to kind of the start of the Northwestern experience. Um, when can students actually begin meeting with um, folks from your office and begin to learn um, about internship opportunities that they might be interested in pursuing? All right, take it away, Camila. Here we go. Um, MCA services are available to students from the start of fall quarter of your first, um, first year at Northwestern. And we encourage you from day one to take advantage of the resources we have at MCA um, and to begin meeting with our team. Um, those meetings may be focused on internships, but as I mentioned earlier, we have a team that focuses on career exploration. So for perhaps some of your concerns in the first quarter are more thinking about how a major you might choose connects to a career op opportunity or you know, thinking through a couple of different career ideas that you have or career paths you're interested in and trying to learn more about how those would be a fit for you. So in your first quarter, you know, we really encourage more exploration um, than actively meeting about the pursuit of internships. We know that the first quarter is packed with adjusting to campus, adjusting to classes, meeting new people, living in the residence halls, and we want you to take that first quarter to get settled into Northwestern. As we approach sort of the end of the, the fall quarter or early in winter quarter, then that might be a better time to come in to start talking to us about summer plans. There are a few big events on campus um, that are geared toward helping students think about summer, and we usually do those around the start of winter quarter um, after we've gotten through fall um, to start to think more about um, what's on the horizon. So definitely, you know, you can come see us as early as you'd like, but it's okay to take the fall quarter to just settle into life at Northwestern and then come see us a little bit later on to really think more about the internship search. Awesome. Thank you so much, Camila, for that. Um, kind of piggybacking off of that, when do most students begin pursuing internships um, while, while they're at Northwestern? I know um, when I came in as a student back in the day, I certainly did not have any internships coming into Northwestern and was kind of intimidated about the thought of even doing one um, after completing my first or even my second year. Um, so in your guys' experience, when do you kind of see a lot of students kind of diving into that world? I'll start by just talking about what to think about in your first year, and then maybe Jenny, you can follow up with more about um, employer hiring timelines. Um, in your first year, um, we really encourage you to think more broadly about your summer plans. And while formal internships are a part or could be a part of that, it's also okay to think broadly about all types of experiences where you'll gain skills and really um, be able to go deeper into an area of interest for you. That could be vo a volunteer role, it could be academic research, it could be something you, maybe you've done in the past, like working at a summer camp or tutoring. Just stay engaged with something that you enjoy in your first year, where you can see yourself developing skills long-term that we can then help you translate as you market yourselves to employers in the future. And Jenny can talk more about recruiting, but while there are employers who definitely recruit in the first year, um, there are also more internship opportunities in the sophomore year and junior year. So there's no pressure to start off the first year um, with a formal internship with a, an employer that summer. And I'll let Jenny follow up. Sure, thanks Camila. So um, I think a couple things that I would add to that. I think the first is, is that um, what we um, have seen a lot of recently is a lot of organizations who have also cultivated kind of freshman or freshman and sophomore specific programming. Um, this is really designed, I would say, not to be necessarily like a full eight to 10 week internship but maybe um, a shorter, um, more modified version of that. So we see a lot of organizations that are opting for um, sort of uh, programming that is designed specifically with the intent of giving students um, in their first and second years some kind of early exposure to the world of work. Um, a lot of what Camila was talking about are things that I would say kind of broadly fall into the category that we would call experiential learning. Um, lots and lots of different ways to get exposure to fields of interest. And what we know is, is that over 90% of Northwestern students tell us by the time that they graduated that they engaged in one or more um, experiential learning opportunities. We also know that probably close to three quarters of our students share with us that they participated in one or more internships by the time that they graduate. So I think really what she's speaking to is, is that different industries um, will um, are more open or less open to students doing kind of a traditional internship in their freshman year. But we, what we know is, is that we're here to help students kind of prepare and ramp up so that depending on their field of interest and what they're interested in exploring, we're going to make sure that they're ready um, by the time that that internship opportunity is presented to them. 
Fantastic. Thank you both so much for answering that. I know the timeline is always um, top of mind with our students. So um, we're getting some more questions coming in here um, about um, kind of specific career fields. Um, so uh, it looks like a couple of students are interested in um, examples maybe of internships um, in the medical fields, um, in law enforcement, and then also kind of looking to um, talk a little bit more about how some of the um, curriculum-based internships, like the journalism residency or the CESPI practicum, perhaps, um, kind of integrate into um, the curriculum and what's the difference between those and a regular internship. Um, so maybe, um, Camila, could you just kind of maybe talk about um, some of our more standard internships um, in like the medical or law field um, here in Chicago that maybe some students um, are able to pursue? Or would, oh, oh, let's give it to Jenny for that one. All right, there we go. Sure. So I would say, you know, the, the first thing that I would say is, is that we're working with, you know, tens of thousands of opportunities on an annual basis. So um, I say that with confidence that if there's something that you're interested in, you know, that Northwestern Career Advancement can work with you to help you pursue that. Um, I think that we often get that question around, um, I'm searching for an internship by geography or I'm searching for an internship by, um, by, by sort of industry interest. One of the things um, that we often will do is work with students um, to access um, the, the list or the queue of opportunities within their handshake profile. Um, there are ways that you can, you can filter the opportunities that are available to you by things like your um, geographic interest, um, even going down to kind of one mile within a city or a hundred miles within a city so you can kind of toggle in or out um, to get a sense of what might be out there and available to you. Um, and certainly also we can help you think a little bit about things by interest um, um, by your, your career interest or industry interest. Another way that we do this is um, that um, we ask you kind of to share a little bit with us when you uh, register and create an account in Handshake. And then we try to do as much kind of um, segmented um, communication to you as possible by some of the different industry-based communications that we share out on a regular basis. So NCA staff members put together um, kind of weekly or bi-weekly emails um, that are meant to highlight opportunities that might be particularly relevant to you based on your self-identified career interest. Um, I think that probably, Camila, do you want to talk a little bit about the second part of your question um, regarding kind of um, the journalism residents and things like that? Great. Thank you. Yeah, so there are um, several co-curricular internship um, programs that take place during the academic year at Northwestern, CESPI practicum being one, journalism residency, and those are required parts of the curriculum um, in those schools. Um, in addition, there are some uh, uh, programs like Chicago Field Studies that are open to all majors that allow you to um, do an internship during the academic quarter that's connected to a course. Um, all of these, um, whether required or not, are fantastic ways to gain experience in a field of interest. Um, some students prefer to start with one of these options because it allows them to integrate the internship into coursework um, and still have that connection to campus while pursuing it. Um, you know, that you can do some of those programs over the summer. Others take place during the academic year. So it really varies um, by the school and the structure. Um, but in terms of the actual experience you will get, um, you know, again, focusing on just the experience and the takeaways and the skills and the networking opportunities, all will afford you the opportunity to, um, you know, develop skills that you can then communicate to employers in the future as you apply to other opportunities in the field. Awesome, really helpful there. Um, since you kind of just touched on being able to pursue internships in the summer and during the school year, um, is it possible for students to pursue an internship um, without during the school year without delaying their um, graduation date by chance? Because um, I know that's kind of always a concern, like you only want to maybe allot yourself time during the summer. Um, so maybe could one of you speak um, about those opportunities? Sure. I think the only thing I will say in addition to that is that if it fits in like uh, journalism residency and CESPI practicum are built into the curriculum. So they're part of the academic plan for the quarter to spend time at a site with the internship. Um, even Chicago Field Studies with the, addition, the credits received, um, it's all about academic planning with, the, with your academic advisor to make sure your timing aligns. Um, and 
I don't want to speak too deeply, just given that's not my um, side of the house, but I will say even with McCormick Co-op, there is a, um, a plan that the advisors work out with you so that you can fit it into um, your academic schedule and look at that plan ahead of time. So um, whether it will add additional time really is a matter of credits and planning, um, but typically we don't see these always add on extra time to pursue something during the academic year. And I just wanted to add that um, we work um, really closely with a lot of organizations, some of which are very local to the Evans Center Chicago area that might be looking for a student um, that maybe can contribute, you know, five hours a week or 10 hours a week at most. Um, so we are often um, working closely with organizations that are not just interested in students for eight or 10 weeks during the summer, but also really want to take advantage of that Northwestern talent right in their backyards to help them with, you know, project work. Um, we even have a lot of student organizations that will take on projects with um, local, local organizations maybe posing a particular problem set to them, students getting some great sort of real world work experience and really contributing to, um, to an organization who could really, who could really use some, you know, some, some Northwestern brain power kind of solving a problem for them. So we really do see a huge variety in the ways in which um, students can connect with organizations and not all of them are always, you know, requiring the students put in, you know, 40 hours a week. Excellent. Great. Thank you both for providing that context. Um, question we just received from the chat. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit more about um, how the career fairs are hosted at Northwestern, maybe the times of year? I know you mentioned earlier that there's kind of industry specific ones as well. Um, if you could shed some more light and um, share some details, I think students are really interested in that. Sure, I'd be happy to speak to that from kind of a, a planning perspective. So traditionally, NCA hosts um, at least two large scale career fairs a year. They are what I would call kind of campus wide and all major career fairs. So really everyone freshman through PhD um, is welcome to attend those. And the organizations that attend those know that they're, um, they're, they're attending with the sort of explicit purpose of getting a chance to meet with lots of different students um, from different academic majors. Um, usually those fairs are hosted um, at the end of September or beginning of October, so once during the fall, and it is a two-day event. And then again, we host a second career fair in similar sort of size and structure um, at the end of January during our winter quarter. Um, those events typically will attract anywhere from 120 to close to 200 organizations over a two-day period with thousands of students in attendance, um, and they're usually held um, kind of over an afternoon period at the North Student Center. So right kind of in the heart of campus. A lot of students pop in and pop out as they have the opportunity. We like to build in lots of other fun things around that, like um, having um, some of our career ambassadors on site to maybe answer some questions or um, getting your photo taken for, um, for your LinkedIn profile. So you'll see the entire NCA staff there sort of ready and willing to answer any question that you have. Um, and we really um, like to see as much of the Northwestern community as possible come out for that event. Some of the other smaller um, events that we host um, are in and around specific industries. So for example, we host um, a startup career fair in partnership with the Kellogg School of Management. We've traditionally done that um, in the springtime. And that event is really geared towards small startups, organizations who are kind of in their um, maybe initial stages, Series A or Series B. Um, it's really, really exciting because it's a more, as you can imagine, kind of casual feel to the event given the nature of the employers that are there. And it's a great opportunity for students to connect with, um, with some, some startup companies if that's one of their interests. Um, we also, for the last several years, have hosted a, a health education and nonprofit career fair. Um, and that's an event um, that's really geared for students who might be interested in pursuing opportunities in, in those types um, of, um, of fields. And again, um, has kind of, I think, a really specific feel to it, given the nature of the organizations. Um, incidentally, a great opportunity for students, even if they're looking for some volunteer positions, some of the smaller nonprofits that are there um, also have, um, in addition to internships or full-time offerings, have ways for students to connect kind of more immediately as a, as a volunteer. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Let's turn the page a little bit. Um, I know something that um, a lot of our students are coming from a variety of different backgrounds. Um, some students have several internships under their belt. Um, some students are coming and having worked full time. Um, so we also have a lot of students with a lot of different um, just backgrounds in terms of identities. Um, so kind of with an eye to our first generation college students um, and our low income students. Um, what sort of resources and support services um, does NCA offer to make sure those students um, are as competitive and have the ability to pursue uh, 
uh, internship opportunities um, like any other student at the university um, would be able to. Great, happy to speak to this. Um, first and foremost, our office um, at NCA, we work very closely with Student Enrichment Services um, to produce a series of programs every fall to support the career development of first-generation and lower-income students. Um, we've, for the past three years, four years actually, um, um, put forth a series called Work the Room, and it is filled with workshops on networking, professional development, um, resources for professional attire, and um, professional etiquette. Kit. And we do a series of several programs every year um, to build community and to educate students on um, some of these areas. In addition, um, NCA attempts as much as possible to reduce any barriers to participation in the career development process. And we have a couple of um, funds and initiatives I'll tell you more about, and then Jenny can chime in as well. Um, the first is uh, the Career Development Fund, which was started in 2015. And this is a fund um, that um, supports students um, in three areas. First is travel to job or internship interviews. We know that there are many employers who um, aren't able to fly students out for an in-person interview and we don't want students with financial need to have to bear the cost of, of a short-term interview request from an employer. So we have funding to um, support students traveling to that interview and also lodging um, for an overnight stay. We also support students in traveling to graduate and professional school interviews because similarly, not every graduate school or professional school can support students traveling for the formal interview um, weekend that is part of many program. The Career Development Fund also includes um, an interview suit attire, um, I'm sorry, interview suit um, funding, which is a $300 stipend for the purchase of professional attire. Um, we want every Northwestern student to graduate um, with a suit that they can use in interviews. And so um, we fund students one time in their Northwestern career, but it allows um, students to get all pieces of the interview suit from a blazer to a matching bottom, um, as well as shoes and all the things that can be used, hopefully interchangeably as students pursue professional opportunities. Um, in addition to the Career Development Fund, we have the Summer Internship Grant Program, or SIGP is an acronym you'll grow very familiar with at Northwestern. Um, we're actually just wrapping up SIGP um, application season right now. Um, SIGP is a, a fund designed to support students who are pursuing unpaid internships. We know not every field traditionally is able to pay students for internships, but those internships are very valuable and important career experience for moving ahead or gaining experience for um, career opportunities. So through SIGP, we fund, um, we provide a $3,000 stipend for the summer. Um, in the past two years, we've been able to fund over 400 students every summer in pursuing unpaid internships around the world, actually. So we're very proud of the SIGP um, funding. And that's about, uh, about 14 years old now as well. So. Um, and I'll let Jenny talk more about uh, a few more initiatives. Sure, thanks Camila. So I think maybe the only other things that I would add is that um, several years ago, NCA, um, upon a lot of self-reflection, realized that um, some of our events, um, specifically around um, employers, weren't as inclusive as they probably could be simply because um, dress codes were really confusing. Um, there were some students who were showing up in suits and ties, um, others who weren't and were feeling like maybe, maybe I'm not dressed appropriately. Um, and still so other students who were self-selecting out of those events entirely because they didn't feel like they had the right thing to wear. And um, so we didn't think that that was right. And so we um, actually um, several years ago decided on sort of one inclusive dress code for I would say virtually all of the events that we do involving employers. Um, so everything from um, an employer networking night to a career fair, um, all of that is business casual. We want all students to always feel welcome at that, at that event and to be able to kind of come as their authentic selves. Um, the other thing that we did um, starting last year, um, which we're really excited about, um, is a initiative called Cat's Closet. Um, this is an opportunity for any student um, to come to our office um, to be able to receive um, uh, business professional and business casual attire completely free of charge. These are items that are gently used and they are donated from the community. Um, there are beautiful things there. Um, we've got shoes, coats, purses, you know, everything you could possibly imagine um, that you might need to kind of feel like you're setting your best foot forward. Um, and students can come and shop the closet um, at various times when that is open um, and can receive um, up to three 
regarmit um, every academic year. Um, so it's been really, really fun to see kind of hundreds of students taking advantage of that as well. And also I think for NCA staff getting to play a little, a little kind of um, armchair fashion police where students will kind of say, hey, does this tie go with this jacket? And it's, I think it's been a really fun way for us to be able to, to interact with our students as well. So um, Cat's Closet is another resource that is available to students from the minute that they arrive at Northwestern. Oh, that's great. That's really great to hear. Thank you um, both for sharing that information. Um, let's talk another, uh, let's kind of switch chapters again a little here um, and talk a little bit about um, being right next to Chicago. Having that in the neck of the woods, I think really opens up our student population for a lot of professional development opportunities. I know when I was a student, um, I had multiple professional opportunities um, while in the city, including my journalism residency, um, where I spent my winter quarter working at a video production company. Um, I was wondering if you two could maybe um, share some more information about, you know, what are the benefits of going to Northwestern and having um, the major metropolitan area of Chicago right at our disposal? Yeah, go ahead, Jenny. So I'd be happy to kick us off. I would say um, it is one of the um, one of the best things about Northwestern is being sort of right next to Chicago. I think for one, we have so many um, so many sort of alumni volunteers and um, employers. Um, where um, I think maybe a lot of uh, a lot of other institutions, if they're not as close, you know, might do something like this, like a video chat, right? Whereas we so often are able to say, hey, could you come and spend some time with our students and talk a little bit about this? So I think one is just purely access. Um, we constantly have folks kind of coming in and out of our doors all the time, and they can do that because oftentimes we're, we're right on their way home. Um, so uh, I love being so close to Chicago for that reason. Um, I think we are able to bring also tons of students on site to lots and lots of different types of organizations. Um, so we really do try to lean in and take um, enormous um, sort of advantage of Chicago being right in our backyard. I can't even think of the number of times in a given academic year that we've been able to bring students on site um, to visit, you know, the um, WBEZ or to tour Google or to visit McKinsey, you know, so many different types of organizations that open their doors and let us kind of get a, get a little taste for an hour or two um, of what that world of work looks like. Um, so I think that that's been another uh, huge advantage for us. I think the third thing for me that comes to mind is, is that so many organizations either have regional headquarters or global headquarters right here in Chicago. Um, and so we have just become such a natural talent pipeline for those organizations. Um, oftentimes when folks are, um, are, are talking about why they chose to maybe relocate to Chicago or have a presence in Chicago, one of the first things they mention are the world-class institutions that are right here in their backyard. And so I think companies very much think about Northwestern um, as a key part of, um, of their business model um, and their ability to kind of um, recruit and retain, um, you know, wonderful students um, like those at Northwestern. Awesome. And kind of on the converse side of that, um, we received a question regarding, um, obviously, we have Chicago right here um, at our doorstep. Um, but how do um, student, how competitive are students going to be for internships um, outside of the Chicago area, whether it's in New York, Boston, DC, etc. Um, oh yeah, I'll speak to that as well. I mean, I, our students are global, right? Um, our student body is global, our employer fo footprint is global, and our alumni are global. And so I think you very much see that reflected in where our students end up after they graduate. Um, if you take a look at kind of our first destination data, you will see that um, Northwestern students are everywhere. Um, one of the ways I would say that we try to speak specifically to some of the cities of very high interest for our students is through our Career Treks program. And this is a program that takes students um, on site um, for for several days accompanied by um, NCA staff members to explore different industries within um, certain um, geographic areas. So we'll do, you know, an investment banking trek in New York. We'll do a startup and technology trek in San Francisco. Um, these have been wonderful ways for us to not only get to give students an opportunity to be able to sort of see and be exposed to what that industry looks like, but I would say also continue to cultivate the relationships that we have with Northwestern alums that are out there. Maybe another really good rich example of this is our NEXT program. This is a program that we run annually in partnership with 
the Northwestern Alumni Association. Um, Northwestern Externship is what NEXT stands for. And this is again an opportunity for students to be able to be paired with an alum um, truly all over the globe um, and to learn a little bit more about um, what it is they do um, and a little bit more about their work. So great chance to do kind of an informational interview and get kind of a firsthand bird's eye view of what, uh, what these alums are doing, again, kind of in all parts of the globe. Awesome, great. Thank you for that uh, little tidbit there. I know um, there's always a lot of concerns that um, Northwestern students are gonna stick around Chicago, maybe won't necessarily branch out and go to New York or DC or LA or beyond the US. And I definitely wanna say from my own experience, I have friends working in all those places that I went to school with and are doing really incredible things, whether it's out in Hollywood or on Capitol Hill, um, working for different news broadcasts um, or working on Wall Street. Um, so there's definitely not a Chicago bubble um, around the opportunities that exist here at Northwestern. Um, be sure, um, we're a little over halfway here in our conversation. So as you guys continue to have um, questions, feel free to type them into that chat here. We're happy to answer them. And if we can't get to everything today, um, we will be following up online with a PDF um, on the admitted student site. So you can make sure that we get all those questions answered whether or not we're able to answer them during the live chat today. We wanna make sure you guys have as much information um, about internships, career development, and all that jazz um, before you have to make your decision on whether or not you want to attend Northwestern. Um, with that in mind, let's do a little bit of a nuts and bolts question. I think that's kind of top of mind for a lot of students. Um, what percentage of students um, get an internship uh, during their time at Northwestern? Go ahead, Jenny. Sure, I can speak to that. Um, I, so our data tells us that um, over three quarters of our students by the time they graduate have completed one or more internship. And if you're ever looking for data on where our students do go, um, you can always find that on the NCA website. Um, there is a uh, sort of a searchable uh, a Tableau dashboard that you can play around with a little bit and get a sense. So if you have really specific questions about a certain geographic area or a certain industry or even drill down to a certain company, you can always get a feel for that there. But yeah, our data tells us that, uh, you know, an overwhelming majority of our students are completing one or more internship by the time that they graduate. Camille, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add to that. Great. Thank you um, for answering that, Jenny. Um, got another question from our friend Elizabeth out there. Um, do tech companies like Google, Facebook, Apple, et cetera, recruit on campus? I know a lot of people are very interested in those, especially while we're all hunkered down and using technology more than ever. Awesome. Yeah. So that's an absolute yes. <laughs> um, all of those companies recruit um, on campus. And what I would I would add to that is, is that they recruit across a lot of different verticals. And so what I mean by that is, is that they're a tech company, but not all the roles or the needs that they have are, are technical. So while certainly um, they're recruiting um, our students in, in fields, um, in technical roles and fields like computer science, um, we also see a lot of those companies having needs um, in areas like marketing or HR or finance. So I think one of the things that often surprises um, surprises folks is just sort of the how vast the needs are of these different types of organizations. The other thing I'll mention too is, is that tech companies, um, while they recruit, certainly, I think we tend to think of them as, as Silicon Valley based, um, there is also a, a heavy presence of a lot of those companies um, in, in Chicago. And so a lot of our footprint with those companies um, also stems from so many of them having um, very large operations kind of right here in our backyard. Great, great to hear. Thank you there. Um, kind of just talking a little bit more broadly um, about internships in college and maybe not even necessarily specifically at Northwestern. Um, what are kind of the best pieces of advice um, that you two really have um, for students as they begin um, looking for internships, as they go through the interview process, and then when they're at internships. You know, I think we're also worried about trying to get that dream internship that sometimes we kind of forget to do the little things once we're in it. Um, what sort of advice, tips, uh, tricks um, do you kind of share with students sometimes that you find really useful? Sure, I'll start. Um... You know, the one thing that is so important um, for all of us to embrace is the importance of networking. And I know when I say networking, that usually can strike fear in the hearts of many and just the thought about 
what it means and if you're not a natural extrovert, how to interact with others. But what we know um, from our data is that the number one method for finding internships really is um, networking. And that can be just as simple as um, broadening your conversation, staying in touch, building relationships. So networking, when we hear the word can be scary, but when you really think about what it is, it's simply um, you know, doing the outreach to have relationships with people and asking good questions um, with contacts about opportunities. So, um, you know, our team is really skilled at coaching students on the process of networking. And when we develop an internship search strategy, networking will always be a part of it um, because it is so important, um, important to um, just not only acquiring opportunities, but something else you just brought up, brought up Fritz, is success on the on when you're actually on the internship and doing the work. Um, networking doesn't just stop when you get your foot in the door. Um, when you're working somewhere, you want to start to build connections, talk to people. You never want to leave an experience without you know, having conversations with people about their career paths and learning from them and then staying in touch afterward because that can then in turn lead to future opportunities. So I would say networking is probably the number one tip um, and number one, just most important um, beyond career skill, it's a life skill and it really is important um, for future success. And I would just add to that, that I think um, that um, I really encourage students to be, um, to think a little bit outside of the box and outside of their major. Um, one of the things that I think surprises students so often um, is how um, sort of broad employers are and the majors that they're looking for. I mean, the, the sort of number one most requested major is all majors. Um, so I, I think that, that folks often tend to assume that employers are much more narrow, um, that, that they sort of have a checklist of majors and they say, we'll take these three and no other. When the reality is, is that so much of what organizations find exciting about recruiting Northwestern students um, is the, the huge variety of different types of majors um, that are available to them and getting some of those you know, diverse perspectives as a result of that. So I always encourage students to kind of not, not sell themselves so short. Uh, think a little bit about maybe a, uh, talking to a company that you've never even heard of before um, and also be really open to sharing a little bit more about how your major um, would be a good fit for that organization because you might be surprised by how receptive employers are to that. Great, thank you so much um, for sharing those. Cause I know that's um, always those kind of little details we always kind of forget about because we're always so worried about having like the proper resume formatting or the um, really compelling cover letter. And um, there's more to getting an internship and definitely more to making the internship worthwhile. Um, Lord knows doing all those little things goes a long way, whether it's the handwritten note or the immediate follow-up email um, after you interview. All those little things I know in my experience have always really paid off too, even though they seem super old school. Um, there's a reason people keep sometimes offering them as pieces of advice as well. Um, so another new question that we just got in here, is it easier to obtain internships, um, fewer competition during the three quarters, um, so during the academic year, or is it as likely to land an internship during the summer? Which of you two wanna take that one on, Jenny? I'm happy to start with that. I would say that I think um, the, the maybe inverse of this question is depending a little bit on the industry and when those internships are also offered. Um, there are some really structured internship programs with very large Fortune 500 companies um, that are in essence only offered during the summer. And they do that because they invest a tremendous amount of resources and capacity into these internship programs because they are their direct um, pipelines for their full-time entry-level hires. Um, and so there, there are some organizations where the, the opportunities are going to be richest in the summer because it's simply when they are offering them. Um, that also may mean that their, their classes or their internship kind of cohorts are larger as a, as a result of that. Camila talked earlier about some of the programs like Chicago Field Studies. I think those are really designed specifically for students who have capacity within their curriculum to want to intern during some of the, the different times of year. Um, I don't know that I would say that it's necessarily more about being more or less competitive as much as it's just about kind of what, what um, you might be interested in um, from an industry perspective and the particular kind of rhythm of your academic, um, your academic coursework. I don't know, Camille, if you have anything else you, you would want to add to that? No, I think you covered it well. I think it really is industry dependent and, you know, based on each student's individual um, program and what you can fit in. But um, in terms of competition, um, there are so many nuances there that I think it's more, you know, one thing we always say in our office is come talk to us. Let's, you know, look at your unique situation. But that is 
often because there are so many nuances to each student's needs or what you're pursuing um, that there might not be just one across the board response to that. Um, it, it has a lot to do with the, you know, the industry and the opportunity you want to pursue. Great, thank you both for answering that. Um, kind of something uh, similar that you kind of just touched on, Camila, um, was there's a lot of co-curricular internships um, in the um, academic um, curriculum for our students, whether they're in this Medill School of Journalism, um, there's the optional co-op within the School of Engineering. Um, and then you also mentioned earlier that there are different advising offices, um, sometimes specific to schools or specific to majors. Um, I was wondering, could you maybe shed a little light about how students um, interact um, between, or maybe what's the relationship between your offices and those offices, um, and how students should kind of navigate that um, to kind of maximize the university's um, abilities to support them? Sure, absolutely. Um, and thank you for asking this question because I know that the career landscape at Northwestern can be a little bit confusing to navigate with so many offices. But I do want to emphasize in saying that that we partner really well with all those offices and we have I would say a unique relationship with each school based on the needs of the population of that school. So um, perhaps I can just um, explain it by going school by school by you know starting there. Um, the Engineering Career Development Office in McCormick, um, will work with students from the beginning of their time at Northwestern, and they are supporting students who are interested in engineering and technical fields and pursuing those opportunities. They have a really amazing career development course that's part of the curriculum in McCormick that guides students through, um, you know, all stages of um, preparing for internship searching and career exploration. Um, and then they have a platform called McCormick Connect, where they post um, job and internship opportunities, as well as supporting students through co-op. At NCA, we do have an advisor who supports engineering students as well. Um, our office is the centralized career office and we support all majors, all disciplines and um, almost all degree levels with, with through NCA. Um, our advisor tends to work more with engineering students pursuing opportunities outside of um, the traditional engineering career paths. Um, with Medill Career Services, um, they also have a really great team of advisors who support students um, who are pursuing journalism residency and, um, you know, through um, different job and internship searches. Our career advisor just folds into their team and works um, with Medill students from freshman year onward as well, um, just like one of the team members at Medill Career Services. Um, and then finally, EPICS within the School of Communication, our career advisor supports towards um, all the undergrad students um, in School of Comm. And then the ethics office works um, with some undergrads, but primarily the master students. So um, those are very big specifics. I do want to emphasize that as a student, you might not even notice all of these machinations behind the scenes of how we support students. And you know, we don't compete. If you show up at one office and that office can't support you, we would just refer to another colleague in another office. And we are in constant communication to make sure that wherever students land, they get the career support that they need. Great. Um, we, I think a lot of students come to Northwestern um, also kind of undecided um, about what they want to be studying, what type of jobs they see themselves going into um, after they graduate from Northwestern. Um, how do you guys kind of help students um, navigate some of those unknowns um, as they, you know, they know they need to be working toward getting some professional development. Um, how do you guys kind of um, advise students and kind of help steer them as they're kind of looking at internships um, in that process? Sure, thank you for that. Um, so Jenny and I have a third counterpart named Tracy Thomas, and she leads what's called our uh, career counseling team, and they focus on career development. I mentioned earlier in our conversation um, that we support students at all stages in the career process. If you're uncertain or unsure about what you want to pursue to being fully um, you know, competent in your career choice. Um, I talked to Tracy briefly before this call and she said, please emphasize the importance of exploration and being undecided. And that team is all about undecided students and they, you know, are really skilled at working with um, students who don't know what they want to do. And sort of the misnomer about career offices is that you wouldn't come talk to us until you have your resume ready and you know, but we love undecided students at NCA um, and we are fully equipped to support that exploration process. Tracy's team um, uses career assessments. Some of you might've heard of the Myers-Briggs or the Strong Interest Inventory to really help students think through, you know, who they are and how that applies to career choice. Um, and it's a really valuable process that personally I think all students should go through just to really get a better sense of um, 
of some of your skills and your preferences. Um, you do not have to know precisely what field you want to pursue before you apply to an internship. You might have two or three different internship opportunities in mind or career paths in mind, and we work with you to kind of tailor your materials to those different opportunities. So um, you might have two or three different resumes, and that is completely normal. If you're thinking I, you could work in marketing or uh, PR or traditional journalism, you might have nuances to each resume that tailor you to that field, and that's okay. And we can coach you on, you know, what is look what that industry looks for, how to communicate that skill set, and then how to kind of translate it maybe differently for another field. So you don't have to have complete certainty. And actually, the first two years are, you know, perfect for exploring. Maybe you do something your first year. And from those experiences, sometimes you learn, this isn't the field for me. Next year, I wanna pursue something different and that's okay to kind of test the waters or do something different, take a research role that gives you exposure to another career field. Um, it's through that exploration that sometimes you get a clear defined picture of what you ultimately wanna pursue. Awesome. Great. Thank you for sharing that stuff. I know um, there's sometimes a pressure to always have everything figured out um, when you're in college. And sometimes at Northwestern, that feeling can feel very real. Um, but just know, students, that as you're going through your college journey, if anyone says they have everything figured out, they're not being truly honest about their own experience. You know, I have. Um, I myself was a Medill student back in the day and was gung ho about um, working in journalism. And ultimately, you know, I had a lot of great um, internship experiences. I was able to cover Capitol Hill uh, back in 2012. I was able to attend uh, then President uh, Barack Obama's inaugural ball. I went to the Supreme Court, got to sit next to the guy um, that does the uh, pastel sketches um, of the court, um, have a real, lot of really um, incredible opportunities. But ultimately, through those experiences, through my JR, I kind of discovered that this isn't really what I want to do with the rest of my life. And sometimes knowing that internships can be a great gateway to figure out what you don't want is just as important as figuring out um, really that this is exactly what I want to do. Um, I think when I think back to my journalism residency, um, one of my supervisors and I were having a conversation one day. And he was talking about how um, there's kind of a misnomer out there for people that are trying to find their career path is like, keep the eye on the prize all the time and don't, and like kind of blind out all the noise. And he kind of told me that he always thought it was kind of the opposite of that. Instead, look at all the opportunities on the horizon. And as you go through life, you're going to really be able to kind of winnow. Um, what you're looking for. Um, so stay open to new opportunities. Try um, classes that might, you know, spark an interest in something you hadn't considered before. And then maybe you'll discover that, oh, like there's a whole career fear, uh, career field um, that you've never really considered. So definitely um, to add on to what Camila said, you know, just because you aren't sure about what you want to study or what you want to do um, after you graduate, don't feel that offices like the Northwestern Career Advancement Office or something like the Health Professions Advising Office or any of the school specific um, career offices aren't there to help support you as you're kind of navigating those questions and that feeling of uncertainty. Uh, the folks at Northwestern, we're all really committed to supporting our students however they need it. All right, you're not going to disappoint anyone if you decide, you know, I really don't think this is the major for me anymore. I can't tell you the number of friends I had concerned about like, well, I think I'm going to have to like switch out of the deal and I don't know how the staff or the professors are going to react. They are 100% there to support you. So just know as you go through this winding path, um, we all have your back and we all want to see you go after your dreams. And if you aren't sure what those dreams are, that's OK. Um, we're here to support, um, be a resource and really be your cheerleaders as you go through your four years at Northwestern. Um, we're kind of reaching the end of our time here. Um, so um, again, I want to make sure to plug, if you have any remaining questions, be sure to hit up that chat feature. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to kind of let Camila and Jenny um, give some parting words, kind of um, echoing maybe what we've talked about today, um, reminding certain resources, um, or just some wisdom that they want to share with you as admitted students who may or may not have decided to attend Northwestern already. Um, so I always think it's kind of useful to hear um, all the guests talk about this as well through all these live from Northwestern conversations. So with that in mind, which of you two would kind of like to go first? And we have a, there we go. There's Jenny taking a swing at that. 
I'm going to, I'm going to take that mostly because Camila shook her head no, and I like her so much. So, um, I, well, I, <laughs> or she was just showing you how beautiful her hair is. Uh, one of the two. Um, I, I think I would just end by saying that um, you, I, I would first of all echo what Fritz said. You have a, an, a group of people at NCA who absolutely love working with students and their passion is helping you discover your passion. So my hope is that we will be um, very much a regular part of your time at Northwestern. Um, I think that one of the very, very best parts of my job is that how often I get to work with employers who come back to me with really, really great news about the Northwestern students that they hired and the glowing ways that they talk about our students makes my job so easy. Um, I hear constantly about how smart our students are, about how um, how interesting they are, how, how, how they're interested in lots and lots of different things, um, how cross-functional that they are, how curious they are, how incredibly hardworking that they are. Um, and I always joke they have the easiest job in the world because selling a Northwestern student to an employer is not hard. Um, and so I, um, I just really hope that you will um, see for yourself um, how much we, we love connecting with organizations and how much we love connecting with students and how much we love then facilitating that connection to, you know to each other all right am i yep thanks jenny um yeah i, I want to echo what jenny just said when i think about the team of career advisors and career counselors at nca if you ask any of them what they love most about the, their jobs they'll say it's working with students um at Northwestern, you have a dedicated team of career professionals across campus who are so invested in student success, in jobs and internships, or any professional pursuit um, you want to explore. And I think it's so, um, you know, meaningful for us to get to work with students one on one to get to know you. And, you know, we feel like we're a part of your journey as you make your career choices. So um, we are here for you as you pursue that. And I hope we see you all as future Wildcats. Northwestern is an amazing institution. Um, you know, purple is an awesome color and we all start to drape ourselves in all kinds of purple. Um, but I can't imagine a better color and a better institution for you to choose. So we hope to see you on campus. Awesome. Thank you so, so much um, for joining me today to discuss internships, career development, and everything um, related to those. Um, again, thank you all for tuning in today. Um, we aren't quite done with our admitted student programming for the month. Um, so definitely, again, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button below so you get those notifications when we're back live and get all the latest content um, delivered straight to you. Um, additionally, um, be sure to come back tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock to learn about the alumni network and how life after Northwestern is shaped during the undergraduate experience again. And Thursday, we're going to have guests from around the university to talk about the first year experience, what it's like going through orientation and navigating um, the following weeks, following months, the following quarters of that first year at Northwestern. So a lot of good, important information um, coming up there as well. And again, then Friday, we're going to have our last series of cat chats on our Instagram channel. So be sure to tune in to learn about traditions, about athletics, um, and about the benefits of having Evanston and Chicago right at our doorstep um, here at Northwestern. Uh, with that all in mind, it is five o'clock here in Chicago. So um, wherever you are, have a wonderful evening, a wonderful morning, a wonderful day. Have a good night. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we wish you all the best. We hope you stay healthy with you and yours. And as always, go Cats. Thank you guys.